So, dear student, welcome to the next lecture of unit transformers. In this lecture, we will discuss about the working of the practical transformer on load condition. Uh, so, there will be some introduction about the concept and then we will see what is uh, winding resistance, what are what is uh, the leakage reactance and then we will also see or draw and we will learn how to draw the equivalent circuit of a practical transformer on load. So to start with, uh, in this particular lecture, as we are going to discuss about the working of uh, a practical transformer on load. So a transformer is said to be on load when the secondary winding of the transformer is connected to some load or some impedance. That means when we connect the secondary winding to some load, as you can see in this diagram, the current in the secondary winding will start flowing. Okay, so the value of this current would be um, as per the specifications of the transformer as specified by the manufacturer. So the current in the secondary winding would tend to um, be at its rated value, right? Now, as the principle of working of uh, the transformer is based on Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Now, when this current I1 flows through this primary winding, what happens? The flux start flowing in this particular winding. Let us say this flux is given by phi naught. And this flux is because of the no load current. As we have already covered this concept in our previous lecture, wherein we have understood the working of a transformer under no load. And we have also uh, learned that uh, how the transformer behaves under no load condition. What is the uh, phasor representation of uh, the transformer under no load condition. Okay, so now this flux phi node that flows in the iron core will reach to the secondary winding and link with the secondary winding, right? And because of the mutual induction, uh, because of this, an EMF is induced in the secondary winding, let us say it is E2. But as soon as you connect a load to the secondary winding, because of this current which is flowing here, now because of this current, what happens? An opposing flux is produced. Right. So what happens, this flux will try to oppose the uh, main flux basically, this phi node, and this flux is let us say phi 2. So this is the flux which is produced because of the I2 and it opposes uh, the main flux, right? Okay. So what happens when this flux opposes the main flux? The EMF which is induced in the primary winding because of uh, the um, uh, self-induction. So here it is self-induction. So when this flux opposes the main flux phi node, it tries to weaken the main flux and this reduced flux will tend to reduce the value of E1, means the EMF which is induced in the primary winding because of N2 and I2, ampere turns means magnetomotive force. So the magnetomotive force of secondary winding will be N2, I2, right? And it will create its own flux, right? Because this current will, you know, generate its own flux and it, it will oppose the main flux. This is what I was talking about, right? 
Now this flux will weaken or reduces the effect of the main flux, which in turn reduces the effect of the primary EMF, which is induced here, right, in the primary winding. And it will uh, result in increase in the value of V1 as compared to E1, right? And this will in turn uh, try to send more current to the primary winding. Okay, now this additional current means there is something called as rated current, but now because V1 is greater than E1, let us say this additional current is some I2 dash basically, which is also known as the load component of the primary current. So there are two now components, no load primary current, which flows when there is, there is no load connected to the secondary winding. And then we have the uh, load primary current when the secondary is connected to some load, right? So that means this I2 is having two components now. One is I0, which is known as no load current. And one is I2 dash, which is, uh, sorry, not I2, it is I1 basically. So uh, this is the primary current basically, right? Primary current. So this is known as load uh, component. The load component of the primary current, right? Now this uh, additional current, which is denoted by I2 dash, what it will do, it will set up its own magnetomotive force in the primary winding and it will try to generate an additional flux, which is, let us say, phi2 dash, and it will oppose the phi2. Now when it will oppose the phi2, it will cancel the effect of phi2 and hence the net flux in the iron core will remain as it is. It will not change. That is phi naught, right? So now the magnetic effect of I2 basically, which we have seen in terms of the flux uh, produced by the ampere turns of the secondary winding are neutralized or is neutralized by this additional flux produced by this additional primary current I2 dash. Now, from this discussion held as of now, we can say that the total flux in the core of the transformer will remain unchanged as it is. As you can see here, this, this flux, which is opposite to the uh, flux produced by the secondary ampere turns. Okay, and this flux is produced by the primary additional ampere turns, right? So these two are cancelling each other. So the net flux will remain as it is, that is phi naught in the core of the transformer, right? Now, now because core flux remains constant at all loads, so the core loss almost remains constant under different loading conditions. So now this is one thing which we, uh, you know, uh, should understand that the core losses, basically core losses are also known as the uh, iron losses. And this is one reason that, uh, one of the reasons that we call these losses as the constant losses. That means whether your transformer is unloaded or loaded, that means whether the secondary winding is connected to any load or not connected to any load, whatever is the condition, the iron losses will remain as it is. So we, that is why we call these losses as constant loss. Now, uh, from the above discussion, we can say that the two flux are same, right? So flux phi2 is produced by the ampere turns of the secondary winding, that is N2 and I2, and flux phi2 dash, which is countering the uh, secondary flux is produced by the number of turns of the primary winding and the additional primary current. So by using this, we can find out the value of I2 dash. So I2 dash is equal to uh, Ki2 basically, right? So where N2 by N1 is equal to K, right? 
now the total primary current now what happens now because in no load condition we have seen that there is some no load current flowing in the primary winding now under load condition we have got one more component of the primary winding which is the load component of the primary current right so this load component of the primary current which is i2 dash and the no load component of the primary current which is i not so these two currents give as a sum equal to the total primary current so that means the total primary current i1 has two components i2 dash which is the load component of the primary current and i not which is the no load component of the primary current right so this i2 dash as we have already uh, derived here it is equal to k i2 because it is the function of secondary current so we have denoted it with as i2 dash basically okay otherwise you can give any notation notation doesn't matter here it is only the concept that you need to understand i note further has two components this is the active component which we have already studied in our previous lecture uh, transformer under no load condition so this iw is the active component of the no load current and this is the magnetizing component of the no load current right so now let us see what is the winding resistance and leakage reactant this is what we need to understand now now because our transformer has been connected to the load now let us draw the transformer once again now because the transformer has connect been connected to the load so this is let us say the uh, primary winding and then we have the secondary winding now we have the load here right now when this load is connected this current i2 will flow now when this current i2 will flow because this current i2 is flowing through the secondary winding and this current is the rated value rated current so that means the demand of current has increased in the secondary winding this current is because of this emf this emf is because of the flux because of the mutual induction this flux is because of the primary current so that means if the value of i2 is increasing so the value of e2 shall also increase in turn the value of flux shall increase because e2 is because of flux flux is because of primary current so the primary current value shall also increase so that means under load condition i2 and i1 increase as compared to no load condition now when the value of these increase so they are flowing through a conductor conductor has a resistivity conductor has l conductor has some area of cross section so that means this conductor will have certain resistance these wires and of course when this current i2 will flow through a wire so it will show some i2 square r2 effect and this primary current will show some i1 square r1 effect so that means these current which are high now flowing through some wire wire has some resistance so obviously there will be certain 
heat effect or I square R effect appear in the primary and secondary winding of the transformer. Now this effect is not only because of the current that is flowing in the primary and secondary winding, it is also because of the resistance of these two windings. Earlier under no load condition, because secondary current is zero, primary current is negligible. So we do not consider the effect of the resistances. That means I square R effect that becomes negligible in that condition. But when the transformer is connected to load, primary current increases, secondary current increases, resistance is already there. So the effect of resistance appears there. So we need to consider the resistance of the winding, right? Ideally, a transformer does not have any winding resistance, but practically a transformer possesses a winding resistance. And these resistances are always shown in series with the uh, in series with the supply or load supply in case of primary winding and load in case of secondary winding. Right. So. So as we already know that ideal transformer does not have any resistance, but practically uh, we do have resistance in the primary and secondary winding. So actually a transformer the primary as well as the secondary winding will have certain resistance and because of these resistances there will always be certain voltage drop that takes place in the two windings right so what does it mean it means now earlier what we were saying we were saying that v1 is equal to e1 and v2 is equal to e2 now because we have a resistance here so if e1 e2 is here and v2 is here and it is connected to some load and I2 is flowing here. So if we apply KVL in this case, so the equation will be E2 minus I2 R2 minus V2 is equal to zero. So V2 will be now E2 minus I2 R2. So that means the value of V2 will be less than E2 now. Okay, so this is the effect which appears when the transformer is connected to some load, right? The similar type of uh, effect is seen in the primary winding also. Now what is magnetic leakage basically? Now let us understand magnetic leakage. Now, as you can see in this particular diagram, uh, this primary current when flows through the primary winding, it produces certain flux phi because of the uh, magnetization process. And this flux is mutually linking the two windings, primary and secondary winding. But because this uh, flux cannot be confined to the core of the transformer, it can flow through the air also. So at the edges, at these edges, there will always be certain leakage of the flux. So this leakage of the flux will have certain negative effects on the uh, performance of the transformer because when the flux will leak out so the net flux in the core of the transformer will reduce and this flux these two flux will tend to oppose the main flux right and they will try to oppose the main flux and behave as the uh, negative uh, consequence in the transformer working right now when we have to show this particular effect in the transformer as it is opposing the overall functioning of the transformer so we generally represent them as the leakage reactance or reactance of the windings basically so when we say primary leakage reactance, so primary leakage reactance is given by 2 pi F into primary leakage inductance. Now leakage inductance is the amount of flux that is leaked out here, right? So this would be the value. So it is generally given by X1. Similarly for secondary, it is X2. Now these two parameters are also shown uh, in the windings and as some uh, loss basically. So these are the losses. So now these losses will 
have certain uh, voltage drops uh, in the two windings of the transformer, right? Eventually. Now, these are shown like this in the primary and secondary winding of the transformer, right? So now there are two things which we have understood in this particular slide. One is that practically every transformer will have certain, uh, every transformer's winding, primary winding and secondary winding will have the resistance. Now when the secondary winding is connected to load, these resistance become significant and they, the losses and the uh, negative effect of these resistance become significant. So we need to consider these losses, these effects and these resistances in the windings. We cannot ignore them. However, in case of no load condition, secondary current is zero, primary current is negligible. So we can generally ignore the effects of the ill effects of these resistances. And we generally do not show the resistance of the winding in the transformers equivalent circuit. But in case of practical circuit under load condition, we need to show, we are bound to show the resistances as well as the reactance, leakage reactance in the windings of the transformer, right? Equivalent circuit of the transformer. The second thing which we have understood is because of the leakage of the flux, there is always a loss of the main flux, okay? And these losses are appeared this, they appear in form of the leakage reactances in the two windings. They are shown with the symbol of inductor here, X1 and X2, where X1 and X2 are the leakage reactances or leakage inductance also, right? So let us move to the next slide. So here we will see the equivalent circuit of the primary uh, practical transformer under load condition. Now, first of all, let us draw the equivalent circuit of Uh, transformer on no load. Okay, so let us draw this one. So we have the supply. We have the primary current, which is, let us say, I1. We have the core parameters. One is R node and another one is X node. So this primary current is equal to I node, which is no load current. It has for the two components, I W and I mu. And then we have the primary winding. Then we have line of flux. Then we have secondary winding. And it is open. Right? No load. So these are the terminal voltage V2. This is the induced EMF E2. Secondary current I2 is zero. And this is the induced EMF in primary because of self-induction E1. This is V is equal to Vm1 sine theta. And this is V1, right? Now, this is the equivalent circuit of the transformer on no load condition. Now, as soon as you connect this with a load, this I2 current is no longer a zero current. The resistance of the primary winding and secondary winding becomes significant. The leakage reactance becomes significant. So we need to show all these effects in the equivalent circuit of the transformer under load condition. So let us draw that particular equivalent circuit. So we'll go with the same thing. We have a supply. We have the resistance of the primary winding, which is R1. We have the leakage reactance of the primary winding, which is X1, right? The current here is I1, which is primary current. Then we have the core parameters. 
R node, and then we have the X node. And then we have the connection and the no load current is flowing here. It has further two components, I W and I mu or I M, right? Then we have the primary winding here. Then we have the line of flux secondary winding started the resistance of the secondary winding the reactance of the secondary winding and then we have load impedance connected here load right now here we have this additional current primary current which is equal to k i2 Right, so we have the secondary current here I2 and this is the secondary resistance R2, secondary reactance X2, the load voltage V2, load impedance is ZL, ZL, Z load and the EMF induced in secondary winding is E2. EMF induced in the primary winding is E1 and the input voltage is V1 and it is equal to V1 is equal to Vm1 sine theta. So this is the equivalent circuit of the practical transformer on load condition, right? So all the effects are now shown in this particular diagram earlier because this i2 becomes zero this resistance will become insignificant reactance become insignificant primary current is equal to no load current now here you can see primary current at if you apply kcl at this junction let us say a so here the kcl equation will give you uh, i1 is equal to i naught plus i2 dash right so Okay, so this is how the circuit looks like and you can see the diagram here, four diagrams are same, right? Only the difference is of notation here, it is IC. So IC may be the, it is nothing but IW only, right? Okay, so as I mentioned earlier also, notation sometimes uh, do not matter do are not that much important it is only the concept that you need to understand okay so this was all about today's lecture in our next lecture we will discuss about the uh, phaser diagram of the practical transformer under load condition for different types of loads capacitive inductive and resistive load so this was all about today's class thank you so much